the referee falling like that out of the ring was the best thing that was on WWE Payback tonight. Hands down, the funniest moment. Like, it literally made the pay-per-view for me. Not going to lie to you. That was the best moment of the pay-per-view. Hands down. I've never seen anyone sell the ring imploding like he sold it. He sold it like he got shot. Shout out to that referee. He made this pay-per-view so much better. What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back in again with another video. So, I just finished checking out WWE Payback. And um, I'm not going to lie to you. It was it was all right. SummerSlam was way better, in my opinion. Um, I don't think this pay-per-view should have even happened, considering it's only one week removed from SummerSlam. In fact, there's some matches on here I didn't even know were matches that were planned for tonight. Didn't even know. Granted, I haven't been watching Raw and SmackDown like that, but I, I didn't know. Um, one of the matches that I really didn't know was actually happening was Rey Mysterio versus, uh, well, Rey Mysterio teamed up with his son, Dominic versus Seth Rollins and Buddy Murphy. I didn't even know that was happening. I didn't. And to be honest with you, I ain't really too much care about the match because I felt like Dominic should have won at SummerSlam to kind of give the feud closure. But now I see why he didn't win because they wanted to, you know, play into the payback pay-per-view title name so the Rey Mysterio family can get payback. Um, I think that's cheap. I think that's lame. Uh, it was a decent match for what it was, but it's I didn't really care for it. I didn't. I'm just be honest with you. And I'm 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 gonna be a little bit like critical here. So forgive me, but uh it doesn't make sense to me how someone could almost lose their eye. It has to be medically placed back into the socket and they can wrestle a full match. The only thing is now they have like this black shade over their eye over their mask like it doesn't it doesn't make sense to me that, that's why for the life of me i think that eye for eye match really just kind of bogged down this feud to the point where it's like okay this is this is getting a little bit cringy so the match was decent it was it was a good feel moment for the the mysterio family but once again i don't care hopefully this feud is over please be over because now it's like all right you guys got your win let's let's go on to something else um now the keith lee and randy orton match that kind of was you know put into place on raw after uh randy orton pretty much kept punt kicking <laughs> drew mcintyre's skull repeatedly throughout the night so it was it was one of those type of things where it was kind of a set up through there keith lee trying to make a name for himself uh in wwe on the main roster side of things and it was a decent match i wish it was a little bit longer it was like seven minutes wasn't really that long but keith lee ended up getting the win he looked pretty strong for most most parts of the match but he ended up getting the win and you know what it was shocking uh, i i think they maybe should have, you know, maybe had him face somebody else just to kind of build up his momentum. But he beat Randy Orton. And Randy Orton has lost two pay-per-views in a row. Beat Randy Orton. Your top heel. Someone that's going, trying to obtain the WWE Championship. And he got beat by somebody fresh off of NXT. Granted, this is not a regular somebody. This is Keith Lee we're talking about. A former NXT and United States champion. But nonetheless, it was just one of those things where I feel like maybe he should have had someone else to kind of work his way up the ladder of opponents. But this is dope. This is dope. But if you're going to do this, he can't be losing to no jobbers. I'm just being honest. If you're beating Randy Orton, a future Hall of Famer, top heel in the company right now. 
He can't be losing any matches. You got to keep that momentum going. We'll see if WWE does that, but you know how they do with popular people, popular wrestlers from NXT. They tend to take those popular wrestlers and just destroy their momentum. Look what happened to Aleister Black. Even though I, I guess now he's a heel, but his momentum is not the same. So, I don't know. We'll see where they go with that. That was pretty shocking. And uh, the one... The last match that I saw, I only saw like three matches. I didn't care for anything else on the pay-per-view. Forgive me. I just didn't care. Um, I will say this triple threat, no holes barred match. <sighs> Where do I begin? Um, first things first. So Bray's doing his entrance, right? The whole spiel gets attacked by Braun Strowman. I was like, okay, this is this is smart for Braun. Don't even wait for the match to really officially begin. Start beating the hell out of him. Get your advantage. Sneak up from behind him. A heel like move. Okay, cool. Then the bell rings, and I'm like, wait a minute, hold on. Did Roman Reigns not sign the contract? Like, wait, they just rung the bell. The match is between them two. He hasn't signed the contract yet. What the what the hell's going on? So at that moment, I didn't care for the match. Because I was so confused. I'm like, wait, they've been booking this or like advertising this as a triple threat match, but Roman Reigns is not here. So I he I guess he didn't sign the contract, but it's like then what's going on here? So they're brawling, doing the stuff they were pretty much doing at SummerSlam. I liked it better, a little bit better. When they were facing each other, Braun and uh, Bray at SummerSlam, it was a little bit more entertaining. This was just a rehash of what they did, just different spots. And then they go to one of the best moments in the match, but at the same time, one of the most tiresome spots that WWE has overused. You already know what I'm talking about. I put it at the beginning of this video, the intro clip. Shout out to, once again, the referee made this pay-per-view for me because I really didn't care for it until I saw this moment. Literally was in tears. When the ring broke, I immediately cringed, but then I immediately started laughing with joy because all you see is the referee in the back just selling like he literally just like got shot and just flipped over the ropes and out of sight because the ring broke. Um, it's a tiresome spot. So, 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 so tiresome. Like that, that spot does not, it doesn't make me go, wow. I've seen it so many times now. It's like, all right, bro. They don't ever need it. No WWE, no more ring breaking spots. No, unless it's going to be something creative. No more, bro. No, that's, that's just, no. So, once that happened, they're both laid out. I'm like, I'm sure Roman's going to come at some point. Like, they, they advertise this. And then, all of a sudden, you hear his music come down with Paul Heyman. And he signs the contract. And I'm like, wait a minute. You can't do that. That's That doesn't make sense. He just... Wait, what? They The match has already started. You can't just sign the contract and enter yourself in the match. The only person that can do that is the money in the bank winner. I was so I'm like, wait, what what's going on here? You that doesn't make any sense. Comes down there with a steel chair, starts destroying Braun Strowman. He goes for the fiend. Uh the fiend hits the manimal claw. And he pulled out a heel type maneuver. Even though it's a no hose bar, he kicked him. In the jewels. He hit him with a low blow, man. Like, I was like, okay, that's very heel like of Roman. But it's I was still confused on how they really booked this match to this point. Like, I was like, alright, that's that's cool. I'm just at this point I'm waiting for him to win. Once that happened, he hits Braun Strowman with the spear. Because they're trying to protect um the fiend. And Braun uh gets the pin. One, two, three. Roman is the champion. He quote unquote wrecked everyone and left. Um and that's how the pay-per-view end. I still don't know how 
how the ref is doing, you know what I'm saying? He may have some serious injuries, so hopefully check, someone checks out on him. But outside of that, that was my only concern. <laughs> Once the pay-per-view in, just the refs, hopefully he's all, he's all right. But I didn't care for anything else. Even though Roman's the champ, I think they overthought it. I think they were overthinking with this heel turn. You don't have to do that. I, I was more interested in seeing him interact with these guys as a heel in the ring. That's what I wanted to see. Like, okay, how is he going to interact? What type of moves is he going to use? I know it's a no holds bar, but even as a heel, you can tell when someone's getting a little bit carried away. You know what I'm saying? Even, even in a nose hold, a holds bar type match. So they, we didn't get to see that. We got to wait till SmackDown to get some answers, but it was like, the whole booking, it, I, they overbooked it. I'm sorry. I'm cool with him being the champ, but they overbooked it, in my opinion. I think him just being a heel, aligning himself with Paul Heyman, having him out there, literally just destroying people by any means, hitting people with low blows, whatever, attacking people from behind. Cool. That's fine. I think, and you could still have him win. But have him wait till the match is almost over. And then they'll sign the contract, but the match has already started, so he, it, it just doesn't make sense. But I will say this, before I end this video, I have to send my condolences to Bray Wyatt and The Fiend. Because that character is, I wouldn't say he's dead, because he's still interesting to an extent, but he has lost all his momentum. He was the hottest thing last year around this time at SummerSlam. And now he is he's relegated to having a championship title for only six days because he lost it on the seventh. So he had it for six days and a half. He literally had the championship for like a week, damn near. Not even a week. That's awful. Awful. I get it. Roman, they're trying to build him up as a heel. Cool. But that that. That's bad. I'm not gonna lie to you. That was just like, all right, man, y'all. I'm glad he didn't take the pin, but Bray is not the same. I don't know what they do with Bray. I don't know if he can get his momentum back. He's not gonna be the champion anytime soon. I don't know what they do with him. They had him lose to, to Oldberg when they shouldn't have had him lose to him at all. And it just went from downhill. No, I take that back. His downward spiral started with the hell in the cell against Seth Rollins. He never really truly gained all that momentum back, even when he won the Universal Championship. And then it just lost to Goldberg, went down even more. Then he was able to obtain it back from Braun, only to lose it in like six days to a new and improved Roman. I don't know. So I'm... I get it that's a heel thing to do for roman to wait till the match is almost over but it, it doesn't make sense it just doesn't make sense so comment down below how do you feel about the ending of payback do you feel like it was it was it made sense to you guys do you feel like it's just a like what he what roman did at the end was justified because he's a heel now like let me know am i the only one that thinks that it didn't make sense at all and you know are you guys looking forward to monday night raw and smackdown this week let me know and also comment down below if y'all thought that riff sold sold the hell out of this ring falling apart just fantastically comment down below if y'all enjoyed that because i know i did but i appreciate all the love and support road to 30k appreciate y'all kicking with me see y'all on the next one peace